following products are used in a tube patch repair. Scissors are used to repair the injury and round out or buttonhole the ends of an injury so that it won't continue to split. Stitches are used to stitch down the tube patch and establish perfect contact with the prepared tube. This prevents air from being trapped under the patch. Liquid buff cleans the surface of the tube and creates a slight etch, providing a clean, contaminant-free surface to vulcanize to. Vulcanizing fluid is used to activate the bonding layer of the tube patch so that it vulcanizes to the tube. Tube patches come in different sizes and shapes, so you can repair holes in any tube from a bicycle through to a tractor or earth mover. These patches can cover both holes and splits in tubes. Using the following procedures, you can quite easily repair most tubes. Here is an example of typical damage to a tube. Using scissors, round out or buttonhole the end of the split to stop it from continuing to grow. When you are repairing on a flat surface, you can widen the split so that the edges don't overlap. A tube patch can repair an injury half of its own size. It is not necessary to mechanically buff tubes. A good quality liquid buff with a clean contaminant free rag will clean off all the contaminant. This will leave an etched surface to the rubber, providing a better surface to vulcanize to. If you look at the surface of the cleaning rag, you will see the contaminants and surface rubber that the liquid buffer cleans away. The liquid buff must be dry before the vulcanizing solution is applied. Apply a thin, even coat of vulcanizing fluid to extend over a larger area than the patch will cover. Do not overbrush the fluid so that it starts to lift off the tube, as this can weaken the vulcanization. The vulcanizing fluid must be dry before the patch is applied. If not, any gases which are trapped under the patch can cause it to lift and fail. Care must also be taken when using vulcanizing products that they dry out of direct sunlight, or the vulcanization can again fail. Once the vulcanizing fluid is dry, you can apply the patch. When peeling the foil off the patch, hold the patch using the cellophane layer. Do not touch the bonding layer of the patch or dry vulcanizing fluid, as this will contaminate them. By starting at the center of the patch and stitching out millimeter by millimeter to the ends, you can ensure that there is no trapped air under the patch and that it is properly stitched down. Then, re-stitch around the outside edge to ensure that the patch is completely stitched down and the edges will not lift. You must remove the cellophane from the patch or this can ball up during service and cause another puncture. If it is necessary to overlap a patch due to the length or shape of the injury, this can be done quite easily at this time. This must not be attempted to an old or existing repair as everything will be too contaminated. Apply another coat of vulcanizing fluid to at least 25% of the surface area of the patch that will be overlapped and allow to dry. Peel off the aluminium foil and press the patch onto the dried vulcanizing fluid. Stitch down thoroughly from the center, millimeter by millimeter, then stitch down around the outside edge. Peel off the cellophane. Before refitting the repaired tube, apply a liberal coat of talc powder or French chalk to ensure that the patch and vulcanizing fluid will not stick to the tire. Once the repair is finished, it must be tested. This ensures that the repair is complete and checks the quality of workmanship. Inflate the tube. Although very little vulcanization has taken place at this time, the bond is strong enough for immediate use of the tube. The bond will become even stronger as time goes by. 